Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to A Field Guide to Particle Physics. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Sean, and I'll be your guide through this wild and crazy world of elementary particles. I got my doctorate in high energy physics, studying the relationship between particle masses and the earliest moments of the universe. So I love this stuff and I can't wait to share it with you. Over the next few weeks, my main objective is going to be to answer the question, why should particle physics matter to us? The answer to that starts with a simple observation, that elementary particles are all around us all the time, and our interactions with them can have far-ranging consequences. To illustrate that point, I want to tell you a little story. Awesome for skiing, suboptimal for running. I first studied particle physics seriously in a technical writing class in college. We were all given prompts, and my prompt was Cherenkov radiation. The only thing I knew about Cherenkov radiation at the time was it was related to that eerie blue glow at the bottom of cooling ponds of nuclear reactors. You know, stuff you'd see in a James Bond movie. Really sterile, and for me, really boring. We were given a week and told to come back with like three or four pages of a technical essay. I was in dire straits. So for two anxiety-filled days, I relentlessly searched the library catalogs for anything on Cherenkov radiation that didn't involve nuclear power. And not that there's anything wrong with nuclear power, I just wasn't excited about writing an essay about, about that. Weird, right? Finally, after two days of searching, my heart leapt. I found something in the geology library. It was in the geophysical research letters. In situ photolysis of deep ice core contaminants from cosmic origin. In other words, glaciers, cosmic rays, and drink off radiation. Isn't that cool? I thought so. Okay, let me try to explain that. So here's the deal. There was a problem. Climate scientists were studying the atmosphere at ancient times by looking at particles of gas, by looking at gas trapped in bubbles deep in the ice sheets from Greenland and from Antarctica. And the problem was that the concentrations of gases in Greenland didn't agree with the concentrations of gases in Antarctica. You see, in Greenland, there's a bunch of organic matter like frozen in the ice, plant stuff, animal, like, you know, that kind of stuff. In Antarctica, the world's largest desert, not so much. So the idea is that particles from outer space smash through the ice of the glaciers in Greenland and emit Cherenkov radiation, which is basically like ultraviolet light. You know, that stuff that causes you to get sunburns. Anyway, it breaks down some of that organic matter in the ice in Greenland which generates gases. And those gases basically match the missing gases from the ice cores and cause the climate samples to agree. In other words, particle physics help solve a problem in climate science. How cool is that? I love that. I keep saying cool because look at all the snow that's around. Oh, look at that. Oh. So ever since that time, I've kind of had this unique perspective on particle physics in that it's really deeply connected to a lot of other stuff and a lot of the world around us, which is why we're here today. Was that example a little too much too soon? If so, don't worry about it. We'll cover all kinds of things like Cherenkov radiation and muons and cosmic rays and stuff later on in the course. In fact, here's a schedule of what's to come over the next six weeks. 
In our first week, we'll start with something that's hopefully familiar to everybody, helium. What might not be familiar is where helium comes from, or the entire economy built around medical devices and technology that helium plays an integral role in. We'll discuss the natural forces that generate helium and how those forces are related to plate tectonics and the Earth's magnetic field that actually shields us from particles flying in from space. In our second week, we'll look at those particles flying in from outer space, specifically those that are energetic enough to pierce the magnetic field and slam into the Earth. These are the cosmic muons. They're the same particles that penetrate the Greenland ice sheets we talked about earlier. They are born in the upper atmosphere from collisions with extremely energetic particles coming in from deep space. A sizable chunk of your annual radiation exposure comes from these muons. In the third week, we'll talk about another particle that comes in from outer space, the neutrinos, and there's a lot more of them. But fortunately, they're very, very timid. They don't really interact. They're kind of like ghosts. They can fly straight through us, straight through the Earth, which makes them really hard to measure. But some crafty physicists have created a giant neutrino telescope in the ice in Antarctica using Trankov radiation. In the fourth week, we'll turn our attention back to the familiar. That is to say, we're going to discuss the particles of light, or photons. Understanding how photons make up light waves will teach us a lot about quantum mechanics. And quantum mechanics is integral to the study of particle physics. Along the way, we'll see how they're essential for all sorts of things, from assessing the composition of a material, to that heart rate monitor on your wristwatch, to knowing how old the universe is. In the fifth week, we'll pick up the tricky topic of antimatter. And I'm hoping to convince you that it's not terribly exotic or sinister in any kind of way. Antimatter exists and it's all around us pretty much all the time. From a particle physics perspective, antimatter is intimately related to our perception of time. What's really mysterious is why there's so much of this regular matter around. In our sixth and final week, we'll be discussing a heavier, kind of more ambunctious particle known as the tau. Experimentalists love taus. They behave very differently than muons or electrons for that matter. Great, so let's run down what to expect in a given week. On Sunday evenings, we'll send out an email with the notes for the week. These are the notes to accompany the video and we'll include some references and some other ideas to think about. On Tuesdays at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time, we're going to premiere our video for the week on YouTube. It will be a live premiere, so please join me in the chat room. Or if you can't make it, it'll be there on YouTube for you when you get the time. On Thursdays at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time, we'll be doing a live stream office hours session. So bring your questions, or better yet, pose the questions ahead of time in the Facebook group or to us via email. If you can't make the live office hours, don't fret. We'll record them and post them for everyone to see afterwards. On Fridays, I'll send out a summary of the week's material and update the notes to include the questions and answers um, that you all brought up over the course of the week. Finally, at the end of week six, I'll combine all the notes and all of the questions and answers into one final booklet that you'll be able to take with you at the end of the course. The essay. Okay, this is the real meat of the class. I strongly encourage everybody to participate in the essay. I mean, this course is free, so obviously it's optional, but it's a really great opportunity to dive deep into a specific topic in particle physics and add to your creative portfolio. Around week three or so, I'll send out a list of possible essay topics, but of course you can bring your own. If you do decide to write the essay, we'll set up a one-on-one -on -one call where we can brainstorm and kind of fix the scope of what your essay should be. Towards the end of the course, or, or when you're ready with your rough draft, we'll do another one-on-one -on -one and we'll recommend some changes, ask some questions, poke around, and, and really get that essay tightened up. Then, when you're ready, we'll schedule a defense for the essay. You'll present your findings, we'll ask you a bunch of questions. A successful defense means that we'll publish your essay in the booklet at the end of the course, and we'll encourage you to give a short presentation to your peers. Hey, we'll probably even send you a little reward in the mail for it. How to get in touch? Well, there's plenty of ways. One, you can sign up for the Facebook group um, and have conversations there. Two, you can shoot me an email at any time, or you can send an email kind of anonymously through the website if that's what you're into. And of course, you can check us out at the live office hours or in the live premieres. 
plenty of options. So let's keep in touch, let's help each other learn, and let's explore this world of particle physics together. I'm so excited that you decided to join us. So talk to you soon.